Now, there are absolutely no tricks to this. The key to baking great sourdough with low protein, all purpose flour is to adjust the hydration to suit the flour. And as you're gonna see at the end of this video, we're gonna get two fantastic loaves using this method. I'm gonna walk you through the process with a recipe that uses 70% hydration, but at the end of the video, we're also gonna look at a loaf I made with 65% hydration. Now, both recipes are gonna be available in full on the blog, and for anybody who wants to kind of geek out with all of the data from my baking sessions, I'm gonna add my geek sheet, which will give you all of the information you could possibly need. Now, I'm also gonna show you how you can adjust the hydration in your own recipes accurately and easily without any complicated maths, just with a click of a few buttons. Now, rather than baking a straight white sourdough, I'm gonna kind of spice things up a bit, I guess. I'm gonna be using whole wheat flour with a protein content of 10.6% and a white all-purpose flour called Kula with 10.4% protein. Now, the flour blend is gonna be made up of 85% soft white flour and 15% whole wheat flour. So we're gonna be dealing with a pretty soft dough and we know it's not gonna build a lot of strength. Now this recipe is gonna make an 800 gram dough. So into my bowl goes 372 grams of the cooler flour, followed by 70 grams of whole wheat flour. Now, when I'm kind of blending different flour like this together, I prefer to do it in a separate bowl, as it is a lot easier than trying to blend them together during the mixing stage. And now we're on to the hydration part of the recipe, and this really is one of the key considerations when you're using a low protein or a soft flour. Start with a low hydration. I began with 65% and I gradually built up to 70% during my test bakes. And depending on the flour being used, everyone's hydration sweet spot could be different. So I'm gonna show you how to adjust the hydration towards the end of the video. So to my second mixing bowl, I'm adding 302 grams of water. I'm using about half room temperature and the other half is cold from the fridge. My kitchen is well over 30 degrees Celsius right now, and this mix of water drops that dough temperature to around 25 degrees Celsius. Now I'm adding in nine grams of sea salt, and then I'm gonna make sure it's well dissolved before adding in about a quarter of the flour mixture and then blending with a spoon. Now I'm gonna add in 47 grams of Levant and blend it again. Adding the levan to the flour and the water mixture makes it easier to disperse without mixing it too much and generating heat. I wanna try and keep this dough nice and cool. And I should mention that my starter or levan has been refreshed twice using the low protein flour, so it's also nice and soft without much gluten structure. Now I'm gonna add the remaining flour, stir to combine everything, and then bring it together with my hand. The dough gets covered and it's gonna ferment in my fermentation fridge at 25 degrees Celsius. Now, low protein or soft doughs get super tricky to handle in hot weather. This is another big tripping point for home bakers. Keeping your dough nice and cool during the fermentation process is gonna ensure that dough is easier to handle, hopefully making the process more enjoyable. So if you're gonna give this recipe a go and you're working in a hot climate, you should definitely check out my video on baking in hot weather. It includes a simple and budget-friendly way of keeping your dough nice and cool, and I'm gonna to link to that at the end of this video. Right, so the dough has been resting for about 30 minutes or so, and I'm just gonna gently turn the dough over on the worktop. I wanna make sure that it feels relatively smooth and that there aren't any lumps. And then the dough just gets balled up, goes back into the bowl, pop the lid on and it's gonna to continue to ferment at 25 degrees Celsius. And don't forget to check that video linked at the end of this one to see more about dealing with hot temperatures. It's really, really gonna help you with this process. So it's 30 minutes later, I'm gonna give the dough a big stretch or lamination. And it's important to remember to be kind of gentle with this dough. We aren't gonna build a lot of strength because we're using a soft flour. So yanking on it, like there's no tomorrow, is not gonna change that. Treat it carefully, handle it softly. Now this is gonna get covered and it's gonna to continue to ferment at 25 degrees Celsius. So again, 30 minutes later, we're gonna give this another stretch. And if you are working in hot conditions, but keeping your dough somewhere cool, I'd highly suggest working quickly. 
the longer your dough spends out at higher temperatures, the warmer it's going to get, the quicker it's going to ferment, and the harder it becomes to handle. I guess you could also stretch the dough while it's inside the bowl. That's going to help keep things cool. After another 30 minutes, we can perform the final stretch. And you can see that by matching the hydration to the capability of the flour to absorb water, we have created a manageable dough. And even though it doesn't have bags of strength, it's still easy to deal with and it isn't turning into a sticky mess. You know, these are the sort of indicators that you should watch out for when you're baking. They will kind of guide you and enable you to tweak the hydration where necessary. You know, if the dough feels too stiff throughout the process, bump the hydration up by a couple of percentage points next time you bake. If it's too sticky, then simply drop the hydration a little. So now we can cover the dough and it's gonna to continue to ferment at 25 degrees Celsius right up until it's ready to shape. Right, so it's time to shape the dough. And here's another tip for using soft flour. Don't try to push this fermentation process too far, waiting for the dough to double in size. Because the dough doesn't develop much strength, the chances are it's gonna collapse or possibly over ferment before it doubles in size. I've let this increase by 75% and it's taken seven hours to get to this point from the time I mix the dough. But just remember, that's at 25 degrees Celsius. The cooler your temperature, the longer things will take, the warmer, quicker things will go. And if you're interested to know what pH values I'm hitting, you can see all of that information by following the link in the video description. Now, the dough is gonna be at its softest point here, so be gentle. Handle this with care while shaping and try to avoid using too much flour. That actually makes this process a lot harder as the dough just doesn't want to stick to itself. So instead of covering your bench in flour, try to apply it to the surface of the dough that's going to come into contact with the worktop. Use just enough to stop it from sticking. And then once the dough has been shaped, I give it a quick bath in rice flour, place it into the banneton, cover it with a bag, and then leave it to prove at 25 degrees Celsius. So the dough has been proving for just under two and a half hours. And notice that while it's expanded, it doesn't get nearly as plump as say my old faithful sourdough, which is the same size dough. So why is that? It's not because it's proved less, it's just because this dough doesn't have the same kind of qualities. So it doesn't inflate as much, but that's okay. If I was to let this go any further, it's gonna collapse or over ferment. So I don't try to push these soft doughs too far during proving. Now I'm gonna drop this in the freezer for 30 minutes before popping it into the fridge overnight for its cold proof. So the dough started its cold proof 14 hours ago and now I'm ready to bake. You can see how the dough still sits nicely on the peel without turning to mush, to soup. That's another good indication that the flour is happy with its hydration. Today, I'm gonna to use my Wiremonkey UFO Zero to give this a quick score. And I have just received their new goose larm in the post, which I'm gonna be using in a video very soon. You're gonna find links to their larms in the video description. And even after scoring this dough, it holds up beautifully. It's gonna get baked on a stone that's been preheated to 220 degrees Celsius. It's gonna bake for 20 minutes covered with a large lightweight pot and then 25 minutes uncovered. Right, so judgment time. Let's have a little look at the 70% hydrated loaf first. It sprang nicely in the oven, although it's got a bit of a low profile, it didn't get lots of height. But I think architecturally, it looks pretty nice and it smells bloody awesome. It feels nice and light, not at all dense. The crust is well developed and the crumb has got a really nice structure, not too tight, and not too loose. Overall, a really nice balance. I think this is a great little loaf and it hasn't suffered at all by using a soft flour. And here's the 65% hydration that I baked on the first test day. Now this does feel a little bit more compact compared to the 70% hydration loaf, but it's got a bit more height and it feels kind of fuller. It's got a fuller structure. The crust is beautifully developed with a deeper color, which I like a lot. The crumb is tighter, but what a beautiful pattern. You know, everyone seems to want to flex and bake high hydration sourdough, but I think there is something charming, something really special about these tighter crumbs. This dough was easier to handle all the way through the process, 
And if you're just starting out on your baking journey, I would definitely suggest starting with 65% hydration and seeing what result you get. Now I'm super happy with both of these loaves and you can see how much difference just 5% hydration made on the external structure and the crumb of these loaves. The flavor's fantastic and neither my wife or my little taste tester complained. So I'm guessing taste wise it was spot on, but I will say that the texture is softer. It's not as chewy as using a high protein flour. So using a soft flour doesn't mean we need to sacrifice on the crumb, the crust or the flavor. It just means we need to experiment a little to dial that hydration in properly. So how do we do that? Right, so I've listed the ingredient sheets for both recipes on the blog, which you can find by following the link in the description. And under those recipe sheets, you'll have access to the recipe calculator that I use to design all of my recipes. It's simple and straightforward to use. All you need to do is copy the values across from the recipe sheets into the spreadsheet that you download. And I'd suggest starting with that 65% hydration recipe. And then if you feel you need to tweak the hydration, after your first bake, you can simply change the percentage for the water and all of the other ingredients will be adjusted correctly. There's also a short video on the download page that explains the calculator in a little bit more detail. So it's perfectly possible to bake a great loaf of sourdough using all purpose flour. It's just a case of using the hydration that suits the flour and maintaining a sensible temperature for the fermentation. Don't give up after your first bake if it doesn't go to plan. Try to assess what went wrong and then tweak that hydration accordingly. And once you dial it in correctly, you're gonna be flying. Jump onto this video next to learn the secret of baking sourdough in hot weather. And if you found this video useful, spread some love and click here to subscribe. A huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.